Have you been on your computer and then just a random ad pops up that actually has to do with something you just Google searched? Well, that happens because, well, your internet connection is not secure and you can secure your internet connection with Surfshark. Surfshark is here to make sure you don't get hackers hacking into your system and trying to steal your information. But that's not the only thing Surfshark can help you with. Surfshark can also help you access content you want to watch from other countries if certain shows and movies aren't available in yours. You live in the United States and go, hmm, I'm going to watch the WWE Network. But then you go onto the WWE Network and it says, sign up for Peacock. But you don't want to sign up for Peacock? That's not an issue with Surfshark. Surfshark will help you trick them, WWE that is, into thinking you're from another country like the United Kingdom, and then bada bing bada boom, you're watching the original WWE Network. But this isn't just something you can do with WWE Network, this is available with Hulu, Netflix, and a number of different services. So what are you waiting for? Use the link in the description below or head over to pwunlimited.co slash surfshark to support us here at PW Unlimited and get 81% off of your next subscription. Yes, I said 81% off of your next Surfshark subscription. Do it. Do it. Do it now or I'm going to hack into your internet because it's not securely secured with Surfshark. What are you waiting for? Hey guys, it's Tim and Nick. Nope, he's on this side. And Nick, as we are here today to talk about this weekend's Impact Wrestling Rebellion pay-per-view. As you guys Too know, excited. I don't review the weekly show. I don't review the Impact Plus shows, but we make a point to review the pay-per-views because the Impact pay-per-views are usually really good. They usually have great matches on the show. I'm excited for this one, not just because of the title versus title match with Swan and Omega, but there's a couple of different matches on this show that interest me. But Nick, how are you doing today on this Friday? I'm all right. It's a, it's a good little Friday. Got my, my monster energy flowing through me. It's like 11 in the morning and I'm barely awake. <laughs> um, you know, we don't review the weekly impact shows here, like how you review like Raw, SmackDown, NXT, AEW. Um, it's just simply so much. <laughs> but, you know, it's not to say that the, the weekly impact shows aren't good. I do think they have the, uh, a bunch of entertaining stuff with uh, insanely good wrestlers. Like you'll watch an episode of Impact and be like, wait. I've definitely seen that guy wrestle for my local promotion, or I've seen this woman for my local promotion. And that's how you're going to pick up on a lot of the names. And this car that they have for Rebellion on, on a Sunday, this looks like a lot of fun. So I'm excited to kind of talk about this card. I'm excited to see uh, who in the comments below, how you guys think the card's going to go. Put your predictions down there, of course. You have to return to the video after the card as well to see if you were correct. So, Tim, let's get talking about this. All right, so the show itself has eight matches. Mm -hmm. And with that, one match that was just announced last night, well, it wasn't just announced, but it was completely announced because we knew that Jordan Grace was going to challenge Fire and Flava, which I still, I can't say that without laughing because it's like <laughs> me, a white guy, saying Flava. <laughs> but Fire and Flava, Kira Hogan, Tasha Steeles. It was supposed to be Jordan Grace and an opponent to be named. A lot of people thought maybe it would be Jazz once again, but no. Shocking, which wasn't shocking because I heard Impact was really interested in her. It's Rachel Ellering. It makes me glad. So, yeah, I Rachel Ellering, she worked the AEW Tag Team Tournament last year, teaming with Dasha, which I think they lost in the first round. And now she's here at Impact, teaming with Jordan Grace, getting a tag title shot, which is really cool. But, Nick, who do you think is going to walk out victorious? <laughs> Uh, you know, Fire and Flava have been the champions for a while. Um, they're entertaining. Their in-ring stuff is not the best in the world. Um, I would really like to see Jordan Grace and Rachel Ellering walk away with this title, uh, especially because uh, I was really hoping to see it with Jazz, Jordan and Jazz. Mm. Um, but that's okay. Jazz did the thing that like no wrestler ever does, is and they say when they're retired, they're actually retired. <laughs> which, I, which I thought that was funny. Um, I think giving Jordan L ring is going to be really good. And again, it's just impacts women division. They really do care about it. They really do give it time yes. to grow and to like, let people learn about it. And I think, uh, I think we're going to see a title change. So as far as you saying title change, I would say title change as well. I have heard, you know, when we know Jordan Grace's contract is supposedly up next month, 
Mm -hmm. And when thinking that, I think they give her the title regardless if she's committed to staying or not because that's what they did with Deanna Perrazzo. Deanna Perrazzo came in unsigned and they gave her the belt to say, hey, we want to use you. We want to push you. We want you to be a focal point on our show. So maybe if she is or is not, I'm going to say title change because even mm -hmm. if she is or is not, Jordan Grace that is signed, re-signed yet with the company, this is kind of their, hey, we have faith that you can be something big. Yes, you're a former women's champion, knockouts champion, that is. But also, we want to push you as now the tag team champion. So I think we get a tag title change here regardless if she has or has not re-signed with the company yet. Uh, yeah, I like it. I think it'll be a lot of fun. And I'm also excited. Uh, I'm, I'm a big multi-man match guy, especially with people that are really good. Um, and the next match we have, which is... Uh, <laughs> uh, who I've dubbed the Motor <laughs> Beer City Machine Gun. Sorry about your damn luck. Uh, Chris a Chris Saban, Eddie Edwards, James Sorens, and Willie Mack uh, facing Violent by Design, which is Eric Young, Diener, Joe Doring, and Rhino. Is Eric Young working this? Is this the match that he tore his ACL? Or has huh? he been? Eric Didn't he tear an ACL in yeah, one of these matches? That's where I was confused too. Hey, apparently, I don't know. Hold on, let me double check because I remember hearing he was hurt recently. Like, yeah, pretty good. I, it's, it's, yeah. While you're while you're looking at that, from what I was hearing, that he was working hurt since yes. the last pay per view is what I've heard. Now, with it's true or not, or how how long they've, he's actually been hurt because Impact kind of films their stuff, their weekly stuff pre tape, but their uh, their pay per views live. Um. So, not to cut you off, but here's a quote no, from I believe this is hold on from Eric Young. He spoke to cage side seats. He said at the last tapings, which this was March 30th. So, so right, right around that time. Ago. He said at the last tapings, I tore my ACL. It's Yeesh. the first time I've ever been injured. I missed my first wrestling show this Friday that I was booked for uh, uh, booked on in 24 years. That is frustrating. I've never been injured. I've been hurt really? a lot, but I've never been actually injured. Really? He explained That's that awesome. da, 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 going forward, ACL tear. So he's been working with this ACL tear. Wow. And he's going to continue to work been... with this ACL tear. What an Iron Man. Dude said, uh, <laughs> yeah, I've been hurt and I've been beat up, but it ain't stopped me. I love that. I love that. And I'd like to talk a little bit more, especially about Violent by Design real quick. Uh, Joe Doring. Jesus Christ, this dude is <laughs> built like a fucking refrigerator. Right. And he wears a fur coat. I, th I think he's great. Uh, Rhino, I, I really do like Violin by Design. I think they're a fun little group, especially like it's just a bunch of like the working men. You know what I mean? Just like the blue collar working men coming to wrestle on the weekends and right. attending to my family on the weekdays. <laughs> I think it's cool, but I do. I do think uh, I, I am going to give this match to the Motor City Beer Machine Eddie Edwards guns. I'm gonna give it to that team mostly because i think violent by design has just been on an absolute tear lately like completely beating people up on weekly tv um and it seems like it impacts the kind of company that would just halt that in its tracks <laughs> especially if you got a guy working hurt as well eh, i don't know and they might try see, to play up to it that's my thing if eric young wasn't working hurt i would say they win because they're pushing them so hard mm -hmm. but because eric young's hurt i think maybe this is the match that they lose. He takes some time off because initially the report was he's going to be out for six months. Jesus. That was and March. He's still and he's still working. That was March 30th-ish time. End of Jeez. March. And so he worked last night. He worked that match last night, right? E yes. Yeah, see? So he's still working matches, which is yeah, weird. It's incredible. So who, who are you taking for it? I'm going to go the baby faces just for the fact if I think something happens here where yeah. they can write Violent by Design or at least Eric Young exactly. off for a while so he can go get that ACL fixed up. But it, if if he wasn't hurt, I would 100% say Violent by Design because they're pushing them so hard and as this dominant group. And they just added Rhino. Why beat them now when they just added Rhino? Hey, man. Um, the next match is is probably the match that I'm looking forward to the least. Because it's it's one guy that it's just <laughs> I never I never got into him, and that match is Trey Miguel versus Sammy Callahan. 
I never liked Sammy Callahan. I, I never got behind the the ooh, spooky hacker gimmick in NXT, and I, I can't get behind it now. Um, I do think I do think he's a great wrestler. I think he's fun to watch. He's one of those like guys that can kind of mat wrestle if he needs to, but will mostly right. just beat and punch the shit out of you and, and let you hit and like let you hit him back. Um Trey Miguel has been kind of like finding his place since uh since uh his tag team partners left and became NXT or became NXT became MSK and NXT. He's been kind of like floating trying to figure out his singles run. Um and I think putting him up against Sammy Callahan, a guy who's like pretty much there for any feud that he needs to be kind of put in. He's like a expandable guy. You can put him in a serious food and a funny feud and a blood feud and a grow this guy feud. And a we're going to grow you type thing. I think this match is going to be fun, but I'm going to take Trey Miguel. We haven't seen him really pick up a ton of wins on impact TV. And when he does, it's in the same kind of tag match as always. Um, so I think he's going to get his big, like, uh, you're not better than me to Sammy Callahan moment. So I think Trey Miguel is going to go over here. So you think he picks up the victory in the last man standing match? Huh? Y- yes. Yeah. Because again, I would go- like Sammy, Sammy, for me, Sammy Callahan's the kind of guy that just like, uh, these are just his matches that he never wins. Just like Braun Strowman. Braun Strowman's like, oh, I want to fight you. And then never fucking wins that match. Hey, but it's still Shane. fun. Uh, who fucking, I could beat Shane. <laughs> I could beat Shane, damn it. But I'm actually going to go Sammy Callahan here. Good, we need to be because different. to me, and, and I get what you're saying, Trey Miguel needs the win, and mm-hmm. that's why I'm not picking, because I think he's kind of been just meh since being on his own. Hey, you're he not left, wrong. He left for like three weeks. MSK showed up in NXT, and then all of a sudden they're like, hey, Trey Miguel's still in Impact, even though yeah. he said goodbye and they did the whole whatever song dance thing. But... I felt like he's floundered a little, trying to find his place, like you said. I mean, it's hard. But I also, and we've seen him as a singles guy. Yes, he was with the Rascals, but they were the tag team. They They were the tag team, and he was the other guy. And, I mean, fuck, he fought for the world title last year. He did fight for that. That was a great match. He fought for the world title last year when he was feuding with Ace Austin. And that's so another guy that's kind of, kind of got pushed to the side since last year. But I'm going to go yeah, Sammy we'll Callahan. You're going to go Sammy Callahan? Yeah, because I just think Fair enough. Trey Miguel's been just whatever. And eventually you need to build Sammy Callahan back up to get going for that world title. And Kenny Omega likes to have crazy matches. If he's going to win yeah, that I, world I was, title, Kenny Omega, Sammy say, fucking Callahan can have a crazy I, John Moxley uh, style uh, match. I was going to say that, they, that if that's something that they're leading <clears> to. I, I wouldn't expect anything less. The next match. Oh, boy. Oh, you think this boy. this happens in an actual ring or a toy ring? I hope it happens in a fucking toy ring. God damn it. Figures. But it's Matt Cardona taking on Brian Myers, the host. <laughs> what is their podcast called? The host the major, of the fucking major, the major figure, figure wrestling podcast. Something like that. I don't yeah, even know. Uh, some fucking like that. But, man, let me tell you this. I'm still I'm still not used to seeing Matt cardona wrestle anywhere else under the name matt cardona that isn't a fucking like wwe ring it's just so weird it, i'm still not used to it well it's because he since leaving last year he's wrestled so infrequent he's done the impact stuff oh, yeah. and he's done the AEW stuff well yeah and, and i mean like it's it's just something that i'm gonna have to keep getting used to but it, part of me just blot like every time i see him i'm just like yeah that's zach Ryder. he's gonna lose <laughs> but I'm and then I, you know what I mean? I'm like, ah, oh, I'm just so used to not seeing him get that on on my normal fucking like weekly TV. So I see him in Impact. I'm like, this guy's kind of tearing it up, and he's not doing too bad right now. Brian Myers is just uh, fucking. He wears an eye patch, and that's all I have to say about him. That's it. Uh, this match, I'm taking Brian Myers. So the funny thing here is, like a week ago. Him and Myers worked some random indie show in Wisconsin and were a team. It was a six-man tag, and they were together teaming. I'll, I will tell you this, and I told you this off-air. Impact Wrestling is basically the backyard federation of, <laughs> like, major promotions. You can be from AEW, from fucking uh, – you can be, like, an Impact native. You could be from, like, a small indie promotion, and you can come to Impact and work – 
something. You could work a story. You could work a gimmick. You could work a brand new character. True. Just look at fucking Sue Young doing 90 different characters in six Sue fucking Young, months. Susie Susan. Yeah, Susan, the best thing to ever happen to Impact Wrestling. I'll tell you that now. Um... And you could just let these guys just out fucking, I don't know, here's an idea. He, I mean, here's the match we want. Help us get there. And they do a great right. job. Um, fuck, man. Uh, I, I really do love the idea of like them two working as a tag team. And then like, two, like, were, two oh, nights oh, later. Got, let me pull it up really fast. Okay, I got it right here. Because it's cage match, Brian. Uh, no, Matt Cardona. Okay, so it was. And they lost. It was Brian Myers. Joey Avalon and Matt Cardona against a team called the Disregarded Brock Hall, Colin Brooks, and TW3. Cool name, the Disregarded TW3. They worked for ACW Water City. They worked, no, it was at the ACW Water City Wrestling Con event. That's fucking awesome. That's Last cool. Saturday. Not even, hey, brother. Go work. But, go. Honestly, you say Cardona, I say Brian Myers, only for the fact that he's the one. No, actually... I did not say Cardona. I said Brian Myers. Did you? Yeah, I said oh, Brian I thought Myers. You said Cardona. Well, I'm saying Brian no. Myers just for the fact that he's the one signed to the company. I was gonna say he's the one that works there. He's the one actually signed. Cardona can one day go. Oh, no, I don't want to show up at your next tapings. I'm not signed to your company. I'm gonna work oh. EC3 when he gets out of the hospital. Oh, please. Yeah, I get did well see... EC3. Yeah, I get well EC3. Did you see the the meme that Cardona posted? Where he's Austin no, and EC3 following. is Vince in the bed hitting with the bedpan. <laughs> this next match, we we just talked about this guy a little bit ago, how he was kind of pushed like a fight. He just strapped to a rocket, and then they just kind of pushed that rocket off to the left a little bit. Um, a little bit? For, yeah. For the Impact X Division Championship, Ace Austin versus Josh Alexander versus TJP. And let me tell you this. I really want to like TJP. I really wish TJP... Was someone that I could say I enjoy. He's such a good wrestler. Slay, he, and he shows up everywhere. New Japan Strong, Impact, MLW, random independent promotions. He shows up and he works, but then he goes on Twitter and just fucking opens his mouth. And like, fuck! Um, Ace Austin, a guy that for a while in Impact was just a v fucking top of the mountain. Granted, he's still a champion. He's still holding a belt. Still walking around with it. He's a great wrestler. He's got, he's got the cute little. I have a. I have a. Is this your card? Uh, he carries the card around. I think it's awesome. He's got his big big bodyguard. But the guy in this match that I think needs to win will benefit from a win. Think in the same way. And might be potentially could potentially be one of your biggest stars is Josh Alexander. Josh Alexander uh, in the North with uh, Ethan Page, phenomenal shit. I love both of those guys. Both of those guys are really, really good wrestlers. Josh Alexander is fucking insanely built. He's called the walking weapon for a reason. This dude, I, him and TJP on Impact two weeks ago worked the stiffest opening match I've ever fucking seen in my life. Both of those guys beat the hell out of each other, and they wrestled each other. For the X Division Championship, I think if you think about the amount of people that have held that title, and like who it makes sense to give it to, sure Ace Austin, sure TJP, but I think if you want a guy that's going to like, he'll, he'll defend this belt against literally anybody, I think it'll be Josh Alexander, and I think he not only needs to win, but will win. Right now, I'm going to... Totally agree with that because for the sole fact of there's probably still a good amount of people that look at Josh Alexander and go, oh, that's a tag team guy. Yep. And like you said, he needs the win. I think he needs this to legitimize his singles run now. He's in impact all by himself. He's signed till 2022. So it's not like he's just there for a couple more months and then maybe leaving. No, he's there for at least another year, if not more. And so we need to now finally see this guy as the singles guy that he can be. Be just that tough, like you said, the walking weapon. It's like a young, like a young Kurt Angle, like a like a prime yes. Angle. Yes, I could totally. And, and, and like, oh my god, he's so good. But man. I think I, I think the title being put on him could be really good for multiple different reasons because we can get some great matches with him defending the title against just a Something multitude fresh. of different guys. But it will legitimate it will legitimize him as the singles guy, and you don't just look at him as oh that was that dude that was with Ethan Page, that was the guy I, in the uh, north. He's, I do really like him, man. It'll finally be, oh, wow. 
look at him going out there having great matches with all these different people, not just tag matches. So with that regard, I say Josh Alexander not only is going to win this match, but like you said, needs to win this match. So before uh, before we go into this next match, uh, I want to talk about something that's not listed on this card, but I assume is going to have a major role in the show, which I think is Impact's Golden Goose. It's fucking Golden Egg. It's Diamond in the Rough, and and that's fucking Johnny Swinger. Can't stand I think Johnny Swinger. You can't you can't stand him. I need more of him. Swinger's Palace might be the funniest thing on any weekly television show right now for pro wrestling. I think it's phenomenal. I love the fucking casino burnout that they have in there. Who's always gambling. I love how the guys walk backstage and really do treat it like an actual casino. I love Chris Saban dorkingly drinking a non-alcoholic beer with James Storm. And like, it's just this, it's just the prime example of how, you know, impact says, we trust you. Do whatever, man. Do whatever you think is going to be good for us. And it works. It's so fucking funny. Uh, and, and I really do think having those Johnny Swinger segments in between Impact shows really do keep you kind of into the show. Because you'll watch two, three straight matches and you'll get a really funny break featuring people you just saw in those matches. So it adds context to the story. It keeps building the drama. They do such a good job with Swinger's Palace. And I hope to see something funny at Rebellion. But. Match wise, next what we have is Deanna Perrazzo versus Tennille Dashwood for the Knockouts Championship. Is this not the most predictable match on the show? I mean, it Fuck. is for me. Who are you going with? Fucking Deanna Perrazzo. There ain't yeah. no way Tennille Dashwood is winning. She's going to stop in the middle so fucking Caleb can take a picture of her and then she's going to get fucking tapped out or here's, something. Here's the thing I'm going to go with Tennille Dashwood. Blasphemy. I'm going to say Dashwood because uh, I, you know, I think you could have a, a little smarky bullshit champion that's like uh, kind of like the Good Brothers and the Tony Good Brothers don't want to work, oh, but no, they no, have I'm not to. Saying she, I'm not saying she wouldn't be a good champion. I'm just like, there's no way she's beating Deanna Perrazzo. Oh, no, 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 no. No, I get that. But there is because of because of the man you mentioned, Mr. Caleb, Caleb with a K. With a K. Mr. He sh fuck Killer with a K is my least favorite part of Impact because he just is so <laughs> dorky and he looks like the kids that I would want to bully in high school. But that's why he's good and he's working. He's doing his fucking job. Congratulations. But he, I'm sure he's going to play into the match. I'm sure there's going to be a title change. Um, and I really do hope this title change ends up with uh, Susan becoming champion. Uh, I want Susan to be the champion, damn it. Oh, goodness. But you know, if Susan wins the title, she's immediately going to go back to Sue Young. No. No. Stay a Susan, stay a Susan forever. Um, next up, we've got the Impact World Tag Team titles. is Finn Juice, David Finley, and Juice Robinson uh, face the Good Brothers, Doc Gallows and Carl Anderson. Um, I don't know. I want to say Finn Juice just because I like them. I like Juice. I think he's cool. I think Finley's awesome, and I like having the belt on not the good brothers but i wouldn't put it past them to give it to the good brothers there's just, one reason why you give it to the good brothers i'm assuming the elite bullshit yes there's one reason good brothers win and all of the fucking people have titles because the end of that fucking show the end of the show the end of rebellion is going to be kenny standing in the middle with two belts the young bucks on one side Three. of him with two belts he doesn't Three take belts. that he doesn't, they don't mention the triple A belt. No, uh, he's going to have the fucking AEW belt and the two and the TNA belt and the impact belt. He's going to have three belts on at the end. But is which Swan's only walking around with the one belt. Right. Uh, but I'm pretty sure they're going to give him that impact. They're going to say they it. unify just, him with the moose. I, Swan yeah, match. but I thought they were carrying around both. So I thought they I've were having with both one still. I don't oh, know, I thought seen. they were going to go for the Ultimate Dragon. We're getting to well, we're talking about the Kenny's got the AAA title, the Impact. He'll most likely have the Impact title and the AEW yeah. title. So he's got those three right there. Yeah, already. I guess they won't but it they never mentioned the AAA belt. But regardless, I think they the, mention it. <laughs> they don't yeah. show it, but they mention it. What, hey, it's kind of it's the same way w, uh, WCW said fucking Ultimate Dragon is just the J Crown Champion, but never mm. said what the what the belts but were. I'm gonna go Good Brothers. Win back their belts because well, yeah, I mean, uh, first off, 
you can't have Finn Juice on the, and we've seen it. Finn Juice can't be on the show every week because they're working in Japan, and then exactly. you got to wait two weeks to get back into the country, and then you got to wait yeah. two weeks to go back there. It was just like a cool thing to do for a quick little run, but it ain't going to be anything long. So I think I want, Good Brothers I win. To win. I think Good Brothers win for the sole fact of you, you can't keep those titles on Finn Juice for that long. And the end of this show is going to be Kenny with the belts in the middle, Good Brothers with belts on one side, Bucks on belts with the other side, and then they're going to be like, look, Bucks actually showed up to Impact. Yeah. Fucking, like Tony Khan's supposed to be there, too. Um, You know, I, I'm with that, and I guess, you know, we can immediately kind of go into the main event of the night, yep. which is Rich Swan Rich Swan Rick taking on Swan. Kenny Omega. Yeah, Rich Swan. Jesus. Um, uh, so it's going to be a title unification, not unification, I'm sorry. It is fucking just a fucking double t- double championship match title for the for AEW title. title for title for the AEW championship and the Impact Wrestling World Championship. Uh, it fucking Kenny's gonna win. They're and gonna like I said earlier, the with thing. the with the knockouts title match. When I go, I is that the most predictable one? No, is this the most predictable? <laughs> one? I was gonna say it's this one, brother. <laughs> there is you know, no uh, way Rich Swan is gonna walk out on on AEW next week with their belt. The only thing I can think of is nobody, no titles change because it ends in a DQ. It ends with like a interference or fucking something some bullshit happens to where both men keep the belt time limit draw some shit like that now but it, before, that's not before. gonna happen it's that's not gonna happen kenny's gonna win i, I think that's right it. And, and here's my thing though if something like that were to happen that would be 100 percent the wrong move because granted impact yeah. is trying to push this as like the biggest wrestling match you can see right now in the world they're really trying to push it that hard. It's like the match to see right now. There's no match bigger. And I don't see it as that. I just see it as another match in Impact, unfortunately. You know, what, but, you know uh, why it's, they can't do that? Because it's Rich huh? Swan. They've done nothing to push Rich exactly. Swan. Exactly. They have not given him a single minute to like breathe. But here's my question. Grow. Would it have been a bigger deal if it was Moose? I mean, the guy's got himself looking jacked. I don't know, man. I watched him work in Noah the other day. He was working pretty fucking good down in Noah. But that's the um, thing. It's like they're pushing this no. match. And granted, they're doing everything they can to push this match. Is the biggest they match are. in wrestling right now. They are. Unfortunately, one thing that's hindered them is fucking AEW only mentioning it briefly this week and not mentioning it any other week previously. Amen. Like this no, week. Not even, literally, like, this week on AEW. I don't know if you watched it, but Don Callis goes, my next week. Kenny Omega is going to be you know, something like the next time you see Kenny Omega, he's going to have more gold. He's going to beat Rich Swan. They couldn't tell us how to watch that show, where to watch that show, when the actual show is that he's going to win that title. So you it's know, like, there's so many things about this match that I wish were different. Like, I really wish like an impact is doing a great job being like, this is the match. You need to watch this mm-hmm. match. I wish maybe six weeks before they decided that they, Gave us a reason to give a shit about Rich Swan. Exactly. It's just, man. Uh, you know what uh, you really know, made Rich Swan look bad? Huh? Was when the first night Kenny showed up, he tried to go into a door or whatever. At, and he's like, hey, I'm just trying to leave or something like that. And mm-hmm. they go, sorry, you're not on the list. He goes, what? I'm the world champion. I can't enter, go into that door. Like, Sorry, this is only for the real world champion, Kenny Omega, or yeah, something like that. And then the Good fuck. Brothers walk through the door or whatever, and they're like, we're going to go see Kenny. Like, yeah, he really I, made Rich Swan seem very underneath. Yeah, very, not equal very to. Dorky. Yes, he's, he's supposed to, he should be billed as equal to, or built up as equal to, if it's a title versus title. Just like back in the day when it was Kurt Angle versus Samoa Joe, title versus title. Oh, my God. They were billed as equals. Right. But they really made... Rich Swan look beneath and under Kenny Omega here. And that's the issue that doesn't make this match seem as big time as it should be. I, I really do hope that this match is uh, fun. I hope it's good. I'm sure it will be. Oh, it's going to deliver. And, and Kenny Omega are great wrestlers. I hope a lot of people watch, especially for that main event. I hope a lot of people are talking about it because, you know, impact is, you know, this card. This card is not a terrible looking card. No, no, no. Predictable, no, no. A lot of maybe. Good matches. Predictable, maybe. But you look at the people in here. Yeah, all I see are like reliable, 
veterans, young, eager people, and like, you know, people that have been here for maybe, you know, four or five years that aren't veterans, aren't new, but they're still mm-hmm. fucking, they're still chugging along and they're still doing great. Uh, before we wrap up, I want to ask, what is the match that you're kind of looking forward to the most, Tim? I'll go first because I know I just put you on the spot. And I'm really looking forward to this triple threat for the X Division title between Ace Austin, Josh Alexander, and TJP. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, and it's going to be nice to see Josh Alexander have a singles championship. I think that's going to be match of the night, but I want to know what you're looking forward to. As far as what match I'm most looking forward to, um, I would probably say Finn Juice and the Good Brothers. I think they would have their last match where Finn Juice won the titles was really good. So I think coming back with that match again, I think could be really, really good. And we'll see how it goes. I think Good Brothers does do pick up the victory. I think it's inevitable because of the situation where Finn Juice's impact or, or their their New Japan, they're working over there. It's not as easy to go back and forth on a dime like we saw Moxley do in the past where Wednesday he's at AEW. By that weekend he's in Japan. So it's not that easy to do right now. But I think that's yeah. the one I'm looking forward to the most just because I liked the match last time they did it. What about you? Huh? What about you, chat? What about you, huh? What are you looking forward to? Are you looking forward to to Kira Hogan, Tosh Steeles versus Jordan Grace and Rachel Elring? What about Matt Cardona and Brian Myers? Maybe it's Trey Miguel and Sammy Callahan. Let us know in the comments. I want to know what you guys are looking forward to. Um, Review-wise, I'm sure we'll end up doing a review of this show. Oh, for um, sure. It's going to be a kind of a big show, so we'll definitely yes. be doing a review. Like I said, we review all the mainline pay-per-view shows for Impact. Thank you guys very much for watching this predictions video. My name is Nick. You can follow me on Twitter, as you can see underneath my little my little thing, my little my little thing right here. Arm week twenty one. Follow me. I shit post while I'm drunk. It's all that my Twitter ever is. I'm sorry, Tim. What's your social media? As if it's not on the screen. You can follow me basically everywhere at Timmy Buddy. Also remember to follow us on Facebook, Facebook.com forward slash PW Pro Wrestling ULTD. Follow us on Instagram by searching for Pro Wrestling Unlimited and follow us on Twitter at PW Unlimited, as well as our Patreon, patreon.com forward slash PW Unlimited. As Nick waves and dances, we're out. <laughs>